One final pillar of OOP to go. We talked about encapsulation, about abstraction, and about inheritance. And then there's this fourth one that has a pretty tough word, polymorphism. What does that mean? Well, poly means many, and morphism means form. So many forms. Now, we know that methods belong to objects, right? We use the self keyword to act upon the object that got instantiated. Now, in Python, this idea of polymorphism refers to the way in which object classes can share the same method name. But those method names can act differently based on what object calls them. Now, that sounds extremely confusing, so let's have a look at a code. We have our user, wizard, and archer classes. And as I mentioned, with polymorphism, different object classes can share method names. So we have attack here that is shared, but each one does something different based on the attribute. For example, when I do wizard1 attack, so let's do that, wizard1.attack. If I click run, I get attacking with power of 60. Because, well, wizard has a special meaning to its attack versus archer. They're different. So although they share the same method names, because of the object that's calling it, the output is going to be different. So we can actually do something quite interesting here. Let's say that I have wizard1, and then we'll also have archer1, and archer1 will be Robin, and Robin has 30 arrows now. What I can do here is actually call them in different ways. For example, I can create an entire new function called player attack. And this player attack takes a character. And in here, we can say character dot attack. And now, if I run this code and say player attack wizard one, and I run this, I'll get attacking with power of one. If I do player attack, have archer in here. If I click run, you see that the same function gives me a different output, even though we're calling the same thing because of the object that we pass into it, polymorphism. Another way to demonstrate this is if we do a for loop. If I do for, let's say character, in and let's add wizard one and archer one into a list and if i print here or let's just run character dot attack if i click run here once again i have two different outputs even though i'm calling the same method because of the different objects and this is a really powerful concept right because we're able to customize this according to our specific needs. Even if, let's say that the user had a attack method. And this default attack method is, let's say print do nothing because it's just a user. Even if I run these, and let's say print wizard one, and let's say dot attack, if I click run, it's going to override whatever the original attack was because we already have that method in our wizard class. But let's say I wanted to have both user and wizard run the attack method. How can I do this? Now, this is something we'll explore a little bit more in the next video, but for now, I can say user dot attack and give it self.
because I accept user as my parameter in here. And then I can run user.attack. So let's see what happens here. If I click run, I have do nothing and attacking with power of 60. So polymorphism allows us to have many forms. It is the ability to redefine methods for these derived classes, that is wizard and archer. And an object that gets instantiated can behave in different forms, in different ways based on polymorphism. And this is useful because we are able to modify our classes to our specific needs, but also not have to repeat ourselves in case we want to use something like attack from user inside of wizard. So there you have it, the four pillars of OOP. Encapsulation, abstraction, inheritance, and then finally, polymorphism. Now, no amount of videos or books are going to teach you exactly when to use what. However, the idea here is to understand that these powers exist with OOP. You're never going to say, oh, I need to implement polymorphism. No, most of the time you're just coding along and it happens that you're coding in a way that emphasizes polymorphism. This is just the power of OOP. Although these are big words, at the end of the day, we've learned how to use them to structure our code in a way that is efficient and clean. And that's the whole point. It's all about organizing our code. Now, some of you may have been a little confused when I did this, user.attack self. In the next video, I want to explore this a little bit more. I'll see you in that one.